Hey guys, Richard at Ridings here. Again, not in my room, but uh, hey, this is the best place to do it now. I just have to always spare time with the ferrets, and here they come. Always way on over when they uh, hear me talking. Yeah, well, you want to join the, be in the shop, do you? Yeah, this is Quill. Always runs over first, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yo. <laughs> yeah. Nope, he's there once in. Can you be in the video, Quill? There we go. <laughs> nah, he's there. Uh, Nope, and he's gone. So yeah, I'm turning and see a bit delayed. I've uh, really been putting off these episodes. I've been watching them every day. I've not fallen behind once. I'm uh, seriously impressed. So I did uh, burn through a bit of the episode I'm about to uh, review. But uh, no, I just haven't been getting around to doing them. I really, really should. I'm getting way too behind now. I'm like half of the series as I record this. But uh, anyway, onto it. So the Christmas episode, um, Voyage of the Damned, a.k.a. the Kylie episode. <laughs> God, I admit, watching this for the first time back in 07, I kind of forgot Carly was actually an actress that, uh, no, felt like stunt casting. Um, although Carly, uh, with Carly obviously wasn't that, like, the extreme height of her career in 2007. I know she'd done their album in, uh, 2003, I think it was, sounds like. So you had 2000, then you had 2001, and then 2004. <laughs> Run my now CDs, tracks like Red-Blooded Woman, Slow, all of them, uh, but yeah, either way, she was still a uh, big name. I just forgot she was an actress, to be honest. And um, yeah, she's in that. And of course, unsurprisingly, this is the most viewed Doctor Who episode of all time, at least modern Doctor Who. I'm pretty sure there's a Tom Baker one that's higher. But yeah, this one with like nearly 17 million viewers or something, nothing is ever going to top that. I don't even think the specials next year with Dave Tennant will do that job. Um, but yeah, and I'm sorry, it's not a bad episode, but it's probably, it's probably though, I think... So far, it's the weakest Christmas episode. It's still a good one, but it's, you know, it's fine. You know, it's not particularly Christmassy. And although there's a nice Christmas scene with uh, Bernard Cribbins, uh, random, like, street vendor in London, um, when they land on Earth, and uh, that's pretty much... And then this Chris the ship has got a Christmassy theme, but that's pretty much it. It's probably kind of the first one of the episodes, because there's quite a few of these where set of Christmas doesn't feel Christmassy enough, and, um, yeah, that's kind of the problem. It's, just, it's basically a disaster movie-type episode, um... I imagine Poseidon Adventures is probably the special. I've never actually seen that film. Um, is that about it? basically everything going on in a ship? Let's just, yeah, it's just called Titanic because that's what this episode is. <laughs> the, so the previous one ended with the Titanic ramming through the TARDIS and it's not the Titanic, you know, the actual ship that sunk. It's a spaceship called Titanic. Think Futurama where they name a ship after the Titanic. I have no idea what that ship actually what happened. Even Fry's food <laughs> should have some knowledge of that. So, um, but yeah, this is just a ship called the Titanic and... Um, yeah, it's uh Christmas Day episode. The Doctor's on his own because his wife and Martha has left and he ends up in there and meeting a new group. And, of course, you've got the future companion, um, Astrid, who's played by Kylie. But, yeah, like, that's ever going to happen. <laughs> I'm like, how much would Kylie cost uh, BBC TV licence payers to appear full-time in Doctor Who? Who knows? But, uh, yeah, she's um, much like Donna in um, the Series 3 one a year ago. She's, like, a one-off character. And, um, yeah, she's good. There's some other good characters. There's, like, naturally a bad character in there as well. Um Good upcoming actors. I always forget the actor's name. Um, he was in Gavin and Stacey as well. Um, that TV show, Mr. and Mrs. Something. Well, maybe it's just called Mr. and Mrs. But um, yeah, I'm with short hair, big ears. <laughs> I'm good, good, good actor, but um, he's just a one-off as well. So yeah, let's actually get on to the actual episode. Three and a half minutes in. So basically, Doctor's on his own, ends up in this ship, um, the Titanic, on a big Christmassy themed event. Ends up but, like forming a group with a bunch of people and things quickly go wrong. The ship is basically sent to is going to crash into England, um, starting with Buckingham Palace, and uh, he basically has to stop it. Uh, yeah, well, you've got these, like, robot angels, which uh, basically start killing everybody. The Doctor and Co. stop them, but gradually his group gets uh, thinned out. There's, like, a, you know, nice uh, couple that, like, one by one die. Um, you've got this uh, guy who's, like, this little um, red cactus, I suppose. Like, a bit, yeah, a small red cactus who... Uh, yeah, he's got a nice cat. He's like he's part robot. Um, you got this um like older guy who's like the uh, the expert on Earth. Earth's got, like completely insane history. He's, like how England are at war with Turkey. <laughs> and they, yeah, I can't remember. It's so bad. They like you know the battle is put to rest or like comes to a head on Christmas Day or something. It's all completely insane stuff that you could like, imagine in the future. Our facts are completely distorted and completely inaccurate. For, just for the sake of a good story, and um. And yes, of course, there's the bad one in the group, the guy who, like, doesn't care about anyone but himself and is effectively only motivated by money. Um, and then you've got Astrid. She's, like, this waitress who uh, 
Of course, like that guy, for example, doesn't care about anyone. The typical rich guys don't care about anyone else and treats the uh, you know, lower class horribly. And um, yeah, Astrid just goes this uh, waitress who quits and basically quits the job to travel for the doctor. He actually invites her to travel with him. And yeah, they get on quite well. Of course, you get the dread of it being a possible romance. But nah, there's only like a vague hint of it in this episode. It's, uh, you know, quite quite well done. Um, yeah, you don't know what's going on. But of course, in the end, everyone dies, including Astrid. She... Uh, Basically, the villain is the owner, this guy called Max Capcorn, who's basically like a floating head. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a head in some sort of like st- like steel wheelchair or something. He's basically rigged the ship to crash. So he basically, he's like, basically, he sold his shares and he's going to bankrupt everyone else or something by like, and cash in on like the disaster. And yeah, because of his like thing he's in, he's going to be okay. But yeah, Astrid, uh, in, pick- in some pickup truck, rams him over the edge and dies. The doctor tries to bring her back. He sort of, it is a nice ending, kind of brings their consciousness back so you can sort of like live a little bit and um, they all leave and yeah, the uh, the bad guy, the group of course has uh, sold off all his shares and he's now gonna ca- also going to cash in on his uh, his competitors losing money and it's like, yeah, and the older guy who survives Mr. Copper just says that how, like, there's always someone you wouldn't, you know, who doesn't deserve to live, it's like, yeah, that's the guy and uh, yeah, they, they hint that this Mr. Copper will be the Doctor's companion but he's like nah, after seeing Astrid's death, he's like yeah, he doesn't want to be with anyone else. Like, don't want to, clearly, doesn't want to like risk anyone else sort of being hurt as well, or and also the pain of going through it again. And he's obviously just lost someone he liked, so he doesn't want to do that. But yeah, it turns out this copper's like spending money of a tiny amount from his time, uh, for, sorry, from the planet he's on, is actually worth millions in England. It just ends with him running off into the night, no idea what he's going to do with his uh, millions and millions of pounds. It's yeah, quite a fun ending. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, good, good characters. Yeah, you've got the like, nice people, and you've got the bad person. Um, yeah, the uh, captain, you know, assistant captain, the one that, um, Russell, name Russell Tovey is bringing to mind. Could be wrong, but maybe it's him, maybe not. But yeah, he, uh, he survives as well. Oh, and uh, Doctor was getting a hell of a lot of uh, criticism from religious groups at the time. I remember why, basically, like, yeah, the Doctor is a superhero. He's got all the uh, qualifications for that. And, you know, he's got his weapons uh, slash gadgets, like Batman. He's got his... Uh, you know, his spaceship. Um, he's got all his, you know, all the well, he has no money with him, but he can you know, clearly get money very easily. Um, he's got the like nice, yeah. In this episode, wearing a like, you know, smart black suit with bow ties, he's got the whole formal, like Tony Stark look in meetings. Um, but yeah, he may be a superhero, but he's certainly not a religious figure. And yeah, the Doctor was having a yeah, I'm Jesus like thing going with all like the praise that the character was getting and. Uh, yeah, as he would he literally command angels to fly him to the top of the spaceship. And yeah, it's uh, I can see people not liking this because yeah, the Doctor definitely doesn't save people from themselves. There's no doubt about that. But uh, he certainly does uh, deal a lot of death and judgment and help people admittedly. But yeah, th- yeah, this is probably them. I don't know if it's deliberate or not, but they were really pushing all oh, the Doctor's like, like Jesus. <laughs> um, but yeah, he basically basically he saves the day. He stops the spaceship from crashing. You see the Queen and her corgis running out. Thank you, Doctor. That was a terrible impression. I don't even try to sound like posh and well-spoken, and I don't know what that became, but um, that's basically it. He saves the day, and everyone, you know, all the survivors gone. And there's not a lot of survivors, yes, the angels kill pretty everybody in the ship, even the passengers. You don't get a, uh, you know, everyone to the escape pods through trauma style, like, or, like, space lifeboats, like the real Titanic. No, it's uh, quite a bloodbath, you know, the angels that are, like, robots that are serving the, the guy in charge. Basically, just slaughter everyone with like the halos, yeah, brutal stuff. But, um, yeah, it's a good episode. Overall, it's just I don't really go back to. I mean, I kind of skip most of this because I watched them all last year, and even I haven't done any other Christmas episodes. Well, I was a bit busy with like all the stuff I was normally doing, like gaming, TV, etc. Work, I think later, so I was like, nah, just burn through it. The last ten minutes will do. Uh, yeah, it's not one I go back to. Definitely the weakest one so far, but that's pretty much. So I will see you next time for the. Uh, opening of series four and a bonus episode, which I'll probably record right now. And okay, thank you.